you clap your hands and let's bless the Lord. He's woken us up this morning. He's given us activity of our limbs. He's been amazing, hasn't he? Come on and clap those hands if you're glad to be in the house of the Lord once again. Listen, we welcome you to join us here at our service. We happen to be in person, and we encourage you to join us in person here at one of our locations, at our Woodlands Cage location at 8.30 a.m., or right here at Houston. Today starts at 10.30 a.m. and every Sunday you can join us. But if you're watching us virtually, make sure you stay tuned in and locked in right here to City Cathedral. If you're watching us on on Facebook, make sure you like this page and share this. Invite all of your friends and followers to come and worship with you today at City Cathedral. And if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Today is actually Go Western Sunday, so you're going to see us all done up in our cowboy gear. We're rocking our Texan spirit today. I got my, my, my boots on. I see a lot of hats here. You might even holler, hallelujah, howdy, at the same time, because it is Go Western, and we're excited to be playing here in Texas and so we're going to be celebrating that as we lift up the name of Jesus all day long so listen those of you who are watching us virtually stay tuned in because we have some important announcements to share with you compliments of the City Cathedral Praise Press and to all of our Everyone is invited to participate in the annual 40 Days of Prayer. Call Monday through Saturday, 6 p.m. daily. Simply call the prayer line number 605-313-5107. In celebration of this special season, please order your prayer t-shirt and mask that we all will wear on Sunday, April 10th. Remember, the last day to order is Thursday, March 31st. Protege, don't forget your monthly Zoom schedule on Wednesday, March 16th at 7 p.m. Please check your text and email messages for login credentials. Attention all ladies, join the Cunningham Sorority on Saturday, March 19th at 1 p.m. for the tea time at City Cathedral Woodlands Campus. Leaders, don't forget this month's DNA Lab will take place on Wednesday, March 23rd at 7 p.m. Be sure to check your emails and text messages for your login credentials. Exciting! Do you love Starbucks? Then no need to stop before church to get your fix. Our very own coffee cafe is open each Sunday. Stop in and enjoy before or after service. Do you want to further your Christian education? Enroll today in the Cononier Theological College. Scholarships are available. Please sign up today or call the business office for more information. Help to overcome the spread of the pandemic and join in the Houston Health Department's Take Your Best Shot campaign. Remember, COVID vaccines are free and anyone 12 or older is eligible with no appointment necessary and free of charge. And I'm your announcing clerk, Ricky Williams. Thank you for worshiping with us here at the City Cathedral Church. Everyone is invited to participate in the annual 40 Days of Prayer. Call Monday through Saturday, 6 p.m. daily. Simply call the prayer line number 605-313-5107. In celebration of this special season, please order your prayer t-shirt and mask that we all will wear on Sunday, April 10th. Remember, the last day to order is Thursday, March 31st. Protege, don't forget your monthly Zoom schedule on Wednesday, March 16th at 7 p.m. Please check your text and email messages for login credentials. Attention all ladies, join the Cunningham Sorority on Saturday, March 19th at 1 p.m. for the tea time at City Cathedral Woodlands Campus. Leaders, don't forget this month's DNA Lab will take place on Wednesday, March 23rd at 7 p.m. Be sure to check your emails and text messages for your login credentials. Exciting! Do you love Starbucks? Then no need to stop before church to get your fix. Our very own coffee cafe is open each Sunday. Stop in and enjoy before or after service. Do you want to further your Christian education? Enroll today in the Cononier Theological College. Scholarships are available. Please sign up today or call the business office for more information. Help to overcome the spread of the pandemic and join in the Houston Health Department's Take Your Best Shot campaign. Remember, COVID vaccines are free and anyone 12 or older is eligible with no appointment necessary and free of charge. And I'm your announcing clerk, Ricky Williams. Thank you for worshiping with us here at the City Cathedral Church.
joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Congregation. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and to praise his name, congregation and all. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues to draw us to his worship. Amen. Amen. Continue to stand as we declare our church covenant. We'll say it, we'll say it all together as one collective body. Let's begin. We covenant with our pastor and members of the City Cathedral Church family to pray for Bishop Leroy J. Woodard Jr., Lady Gail Woodard, and members of the City Cathedral Church daily and visitors today. Attend the worship and Bible study opportunities weekly. Request the presence of the unsaved, unchurched, uncommitted, and undecided weekly to uphold the ministry of restoration by feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, and giving hope to the hopeless. Tithe and give my offering systematically with God being my help. Everybody say Amen. Amen. Now come on and put yeah. those hands together. Yeah. It's time to worship the Lord all together wherever you are at home, in your car, in person. Come on, clap those hands. Lift up the name of Jesus for this is the day. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has come made. On. That the Lord has made. I will. I will rejoice. Come on. I will rejoice. And be glad in it. Glad in it. Glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day. This is the day. This is the day. Wonder you are. Tell him he's a 
it, wave it away. So long. Can y'all help me sing that? Come on. So long. So long. Come on, this is my happy place. So long. Nothing's going to steal my joy today. Come on.
Come on. How many know right now the enemy hears this? He sees you praising him. But I want you to say, anytime you may be going through this next week, I don't care what you may be facing, I want you to say bye-bye. I'm going to stay in my happy place. Come on, I'm going to stay in my happy place. I'm going to use my praise as my weapon. So long. So long. Bye bye. Goodbye. Goodbye to the pain and the sorrow. So long. So long. Bye bye. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Put your hands together. Jesus. I praise your name. Your holy name, yeah. I praise your name, your holy name, I praise your name. Yeah. Not just today, but always, now and forever. Lord, I praise your name. Everybody say, I praise your name, your holy name. I praise your name, your holy name, I praise your name. Tell them not just today, but always. When the praises go up, when the praises go up, the blessing, the blessing comes down. When the praises, when the praises go up, the blessing, blessings come down. When the praises, when the praises go up, the blessing, blessings come down. When the praises, when the praises go up, here we go. God got a blessing for. Look at your neighbor and tell them that they may need to hear that. God got a. I'm here to remind you that He got a blessing with your name on it. For you. It is tailor made for you this morning, God. God, God, it. God a for you. Sing it again, sing God, got a blessing for you. It's just for you. It's just for you. It's just for you. Here we go. You can have it. Reach up. Come on. You can have it. Reach up and grab it. You can have it. Reach up and grab it. You can. Reach, reach up and grab it. You can, you can reach, reach up and grab it. You can, you can reach, reach up and grab it. Reach up and reach up and grab it. Reach up and reach up and grab it. Reach up and reach up and whatever you need today, I dare you to reach for it. You may need a little happiness. You may need a little joy. You may need a little peace. I want you to reach for it. I'm gonna get my peace today. I'm gonna get my joy today. I'm gonna get my victory today. Reach up and reach up and grab. Reach up and reach up and grab. Reach up and reach up and now put your hands together. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And there is freedom. Come on and move a little bit in this place. Woo! Now sing it again. Say you can. You can reach up and reach up and grab. You can. You can reach. Reach up and grab. You can reach up and grab. You can reach. Reach up and 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 reach up
I give God a praise. I give God a praise. Come on, come on. I give God a praise. Hey, I give God a praise. receive it and it's already yours do I have any co-signers in the place everybody reach up and grab it 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 no healing or no one reach up and grab it prosperity reach up and grab it yeah reach up and grab reach up and grab it's already a it's already mine. We jump and grab. Hey, hey. We jump and grab. 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 Hallelujah. Make a draw for noise unto the Lord. Make a draw for noise unto the Lord. We Lord, yeah. Oh, oh, Lord. Yeah. Somebody say yeah. Somebody say yeah. Yeah. Oh. Hallelujah. Boy, that's my song. Hallelujah. Hey. I ain't needing you signing over your privilege. Why go without when you wouldn't have to, when you, when you shouldn't have to? Reach up and reach out and grab it. We thank the Lord for Jesus. Are you happy to be here? I'm delighted, Brother Armstrong. Hallelujah. God is with you, son. All of you, God's elect ones. To our live audience, let's give it up for them, too. Let's give it up for this dynamite praise team. Lord Jesus. They've been hanging out with me in the woodlands, and uh, we thank God for Jesus. Reach up and grab. Hallelujah. 
Go with me. Did you bring your Bibles? If I just didn't feel like preaching, I'd get Bishop Cooper to go do it. But because I feel like it. If I didn't feel like it, I'd get Keaton to just come on up here. Amen. And if them brothers are tired, I know Alexander can bring it. Somebody say reach. I, um, I, I want you to y'all behave now. Y'all behave. Hallelujah. Mm. Uh, did you bring your referee? Evangelist Davis, God bless you for your word. Hallelujah. Brother Tucker, God is able. Yes, indeed. I'm, I'm just waiting on us to sort of aisle, aisle down a little bit, simmer. Hallelujah. And all three sections of this auditorium, let's give it up for Jesus Christ. Place that referee in your hand and give it a wave in the life of the Christian symphony and say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can have what it says I can have. Right now, I will be taught in the word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm about to receive. I'm ready to hear the incorruptible, irrefutable word of God. I will never be the same. Never, 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 never. Never be the same. In Jesus' name. Come on, give it a wave in the life of the Christian symphony. Amen. Give it Kaye, everybody. I want you to go with me. Be free in the spirit. Go with me to the book of Judges, chapter 6. Start with verses 12 through 18. Then we're going to skip down to verses 36 through 40. Give it up for Dr. Josh, one of the main musicians of the Rodeo Friday. Amen. Center stage. Y'all saw him on TV. It didn't even give me a ticket so I could get there. Ain't that a mess? Amen. You would think he would think about Bishop, First Lady, and family and say, listen, you know what? We're going to let you sit up front. Amen. Y'all pray for him. I'm just saying. In the book of Judges, chapter 6, verses 12 through, it all of, we thank God that the saints are being looked upon. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Ain't nothing wrong with going to the rodeo. Amen. Your salvation ain't that weak. Amen. I, I would go see Batman, but I'm weak. Come on now. Give me a break. Come on, enjoy life. In the book of Judges, chapter 6, verse 12, it says that when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you mighty warrior. But sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our fathers told us about when they said, did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and put us into the hands of the Midianites. The Lord turned to Gideon and said, go. I'm not going to participate in the victim bumming. I need you to go in the strength you have and save Israel out of the Midian's hands. And I'm not sending you. 
But Lord, Gideon asks, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. <laughs> the Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all of the Midianites together. Gideon replied, if now I've found favor in your eyes, give me a sign. That is really you talking to me and not my intuition. Please do not go away until I come back and bring my offering and set it before you. And the Lord says, I, I wait on that. Let's, let's go to verse 36 for the sake of time. It's a very interesting story. Um, Gideon, Gideon said to God, if you will save Israel by my hand as you have promised, Look, I will place wool fleece on the thrashing floor. There's dew only on the fleece, and all the ground is dry. Then I will know that you will save Israel by my hand, as you've said. And that is what happened. Gideon rose early the next day, and he squeezed the fleece, the wool, the sheepskin, and wrung it out. It was full of water then Gideon said to God pardon me do not be angry with me let me make just one more request because you want me to buy into this but I got to try something before I buy allow me one more test with the fleece this time make the fleece dry and the ground covered with wet that night God did so only the fleece was dry and the ground was covered with wet. I like to use as a clarion to this little piece, try before you buy. Come on, say it with me, try before you buy. You may be seated before the affidavit of the Lord. God bless you. I'm going to be as quickly as possible because I've been hanging around with too many too many carrot cakes. This this vest is probably ten years old. I used to be able to wear it. Somebody says, "Show you right." And see, we can't be blaming it, blaming it on COVID COVID fat now, because y'all can get about and run and exercise now. But I believe this is going to be a blessing to your hearing, Minister Hawkins. Yes, indeed. Sit with me. Try before you buy. I want you to underscore the word try because the word try in the Hebrewic tongue, Minister Williams, it's where you get the word balchan. Sit with me, balchan. It is B-A-C-H-A-N that deals with to test, to investigate to explicate, to do due diligence, to do proper research, to do your part, is what this particular piece suggests to us. In other words, um, whatever you are believing God for, you gotta make sure that it is in concert with God's holy word. All of us are believers so that you are authorized to believe him for what you are believing him for. If it matches his word, you can believe it. You can surely have it if you believe it. But you have to do your due diligence, proper research to make sure that what you're believing God for matches his will. The Bible says that you can't even pray effectively it says that this is the confidence that when we pray, we know that he hears us. And if he hears us, our prayers are already answered. But you've got to have the confidence that he, that he hears you. And one of the confidence, not because of the better behavior, but the confidence comes because you've located what you're believing God for from his word, which happens to be his will. It's almost suspect, isn't it? Somebody bring you some food and say, hey, if I were you, I'd, I'd be careful. 
especially unsolicited food. Unless somebody you know, one of your relatives, one of your friends that love you, but you can't eat everybody's food that bring you something unsolicited. Look at y'all ain't saying anything. Try before you buy. And sometimes it's from a place of experience. You know, the reason why, you know, that you may not need to necessarily buy it because I've tried it and it didn't work out, you know. So ain't no need you trying to taste that gumbo because it's, it's, it's horrible. Sometimes you need to listen to other folks' comments. That's why before you go to a restaurant, you need to look at the comment page. If 10 folk are saying the same thing, don't even try it. I ain't here to talk about food, but I am talking about the one who tastes and see how good the Lord is. All of us should know how to witness that because we've all had a taste of God's word. So there are three points if we are to really try before we buy. Number one, we must make the comparison. Number two, we must make the choice. And Deacon Barry, number three, we must make the clarity. There is a comparison, say with me, there's a comparison. There's a choice. And, and there's a clarity. Yeah, there's a clarion. The comparison is, is that the word suggests to us in 1 John chapter 4, or chapter 14, or chapter 4, uh, verses 1 through 5. If it's on the board, say it's on the board. So dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit to see whether or not it's from God. Because there are many false prophets out there who have posed themselves as angels of light. You know, having the form of godliness but denying the power. And so because we're not just the epitome of the lexicon of God's word, you have to try the spirit by the spirit. He's given us, he's given us permission to compare some things, not from a place of doubt, but from a place of certainty. Try the spirit by the spirit. Whether or not it's your intuition, your intellect, or if it's from the devil, or it's from God. And you have to take your time to do due diligence because there's a lot of facsimiles out there. There's a lot of clonisms, a lot of cloning going on. And so... And don't take it for granted because you've been a student of God's word for a minute and say, well, I'm just going to just dab into this situation. I'm saying, no, you need to read the list three times with your third ear and third eye. You have to make sure before you dab into it that it's, it's the will of the Lord. And you may locate what you're believing God for in the word, but it may be the wrong timing. So all of that is very important that you got to try the spirit by the Spirit. Go with me to the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 17. Thank God that we got a new clock, a floor clock. Amen. Uh, Wednesday at Bible study, and we had some soon enough church at Wednesday Bible study. Amen. And, uh, and, and so the clock was not in sync because I didn't give them time to set it. It showed 1 o'clock when it was 7. So thank God that we're in time now. Approximately 69 degrees in here. March the 13th. Somebody say, show you right. Uh, go with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. Look what it says. Put on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The helmet of salvation, the helmet is a, is a protection. Your protection is the helmet, but the helmet is really the word of God. When you have an understanding of the word of God, it protects your salvation. It protects your mind of believing that you are still saved, even when you're going through some situations that does not necessarily, uh, is in unison with the will of the Lord, but you gotta know that you are still saved. And you know that from a place of truth. 
And so you got to put on the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And we talked about that the spirit of God is unseen. The pneuma, say with me, the pneuma of God. It is P-N-E-U-M-A, pneuma. Uh, deals with the wind or the breath of God or the, or the nature, the person of God, not the ruach. That when Adam was carved out from clay, uh, he was a vessel, but he was not living yet, not until God blew in his nostrils the breath of life. And then man, the scripture says, became, Deacon Jones, a living nephesh. The ruach, pneuma, mixed together, when he says, let us make man in our own image, that's the pneuma, that's the nature of God. Both of them, though, the commonality of them, that they are unseen. You know, if I were to have you to do a little oral exercise, put a little piece of paper in front of your face, and I would ask you to blow on it, you couldn't see the breath, you could probably smell it, but you couldn't see it. The only way that you know that you can make claim that you've seen it because it's touched that which is physical. It moved the paper, you know, because that which is unseen can very well be seen through God's word. How then can you see God? For God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But when you hook on in concert and rhythmic with God's word, you can see God for who he is. The Bible says that he is his word. The Bible says that in the beginning was God and the word was God. And the same came in the beginning that God created all things. It was with God, Jesus Christ, even his name, the Greek um, uh, name for Jesus is Logos. Or the word logic, the, the express thought of God, or God that makes sense through Jesus. If you don't pick up the word, it doesn't make sense. God doesn't make sense. It has no reasoning, there's no conclusion, there's no understanding. But when you read, read God's word from a place of understanding, you can now know who God is through his word. So put on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Say with me, God is his word, and his word is God. You want to know who God is? Read some word. So you got to do some comparison. Say with me, you must do some comparison. The second point is the choice. We must make a choice. To do some things. If we are to try before we buy, we have to make a choice. Say with me, we must make a choice. Say it once again, we must make a choice. Say it once again, we must make a choice. I want you to choose to go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 19, verse 2. Look what it says. Desire without knowledge is not good. However, more will hasty feet miss the mark. Desire without knowledge is, is not good. How much more will hasty feet miss the mark? A zeal that is not according to knowledge. You have to, you have to take your time. Sometimes research takes time. Reading God's word takes time. Say it with me. Reading God's word takes time. Say it one more time. Reading God's word takes time. You have to be willing to do some due diligence. You have to be willing to do your research. And it is a direct choice. It's a choice of, your, of yours. You choose to investigate. You choose to explicate. You choose to test the word. You choose to try the word. It's it's by choice. It won't, just because God has permitted us to try the spirit by the spirit, it ain't, it's not an automatic. Amen. You have to choose to do it. Amen. Well, I just don't have the time, Pastor. Yes, you do, because they did a study. 80% of people who, who are on Facebook spend between four to eight hours a day flipping through archives. 
it's almost it's almost like I ain't saying y'all because I know y'all don't do too much, but it used to be folk. It's like we don't have nobody to take a picture of you. <laughs> ain't nobody that, that can say take a picture. You got to take one of yourself. We're so preoccupied. And I get it. I'm not knocking that. This is a day and time. I'm not knocking it. I'm like, come on now. Fix your face. I'm just saying we spend a lot of time on Facebook instead of putting some time in the book yeah, in terms of research, in terms of studying and reading God's word. Hey, Amen. It's worth studying. There's just certain passages of the scripture just can't be read. It's just got to be studied. You got to take your time to do some due diligence and some research and to find out what's really going on. So there's a choice. Say for me, that's a choice. Go with me to the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 15. The book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 15. The reason why saints of God should make a choice automatically because look what it says. Simple believe anything. But the prudent give, give thought to their steps. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, I may be saved, but I'm not stupid. I'm not simple-minded. Don't get it twisted. Just because I'm a believer, I'm weak. Just because I'm a believer, I'm going to do research because my mind is strong enough to do it. I ain't simple-minded. In other words, I ain't going to just be, be believing cliches and believing stuff that sounds like it's of truth. You know, in this church, and some of y'all come back to me and you go to other places, I'm not being negative. You get a little frustrated because that ain't what the word said. Because one of the things that I do, I give it to you from the etymology. I give it to you from the context of the text, give you the historicity of God's word so that you won't be fooled and bamboozled. Amen? Mm -hmm. and, and, and because we're not simple. See, most people who are naive are simple-minded. They're not aware. You don't see. No, I didn't see. What do you mean? Everybody else saw this except you. Simple mindedness. What, what is it? The simple believe anything. But the person who fear the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom, give thought to their steps. So they think about it. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, be a doer, but a thinker too. So it's important that we do that. Last scripture that's going to support this, this preference piece in the book of Proverbs, chapter 25, verse 2. Look what it says. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, to search out a matter in the glory of kings. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, because I'm not simple-minded and because I am a king's kid, I am moved to do research. The Bible says that you are a royal priesthood and a holy nation. You, you are a peculiar people. You, you, you belong to royalty. Um, you, you have Christian etiquette. And because of that, because of your representation in God and your level in God, you will move to research that which is concealed. So you, that's, that's some passages in God's word. Unless you do due diligence, you're going to misunderstand it. Because it's concealed and it's only made privy to those who are students of God's word. In other words, you just can't just scad through the reading and read it real quickly and think that you're going to get the complete understanding. You have to do research. You have to read it from its context and the reasoning why it was stated. Because you are a king's kid. Because you belong to him. Because, amen, you are queen and a king. Because you are a child of God, you are moved to do research. It's not an interruption to your time. Because of your relationship with God, you are moved to do research, Sister Candace. So we make a choice to do it. But we move from the comparison, we move from the choice, and we hang out with the clarity. And we just read it in the book of Judges, chapter 6, verses 12 through 18, skip down to verses 36 through 40. Specifically in verse 12. 
that when the angel of the Lord surrogate to God himself appeared to Gideon, what God said to the ears of Gideon, he says, mighty warrior. That may not be of significance, but to student-minded people, God just doesn't say something just to be saying something. His first appearance in a prophetic way to Gideon, he said, you are not just a warrior, but you are a mighty warrior. It, 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 it pins the writing that when the Lord called Gideon mighty warrior, and don't just skate through that, he called Gideon mighty warrior while he was thrashing out the coin, while hiding from the Midianites out of fear. And yet the Lord called him mighty man from a place of timidity. Sometimes God will select you to do something when it does not match your present behavior. Gideon was behaving from a place of fear and yet God called him mighty man of valor. He called him a warrior while he was running from his enemy. Because God specializes, it's the means, in calling those things that be not as though they were until they are. God knows how to uh, scribe your future from a contradiction of your present behavior. God knows how to use a broad calligraphy brush and sketch you. I wish I had somebody. Paint you to be something else that you can never see yourself doing because God specializes in calling those things that be not as though they were until they are. So he says, Gideon, I don't see where you are. I see what you can do. So I'm calling you mighty warrior. In verse 15, go along with me. Gideon said, instead of him celebrating, he says, how can I save Israel when I am the weakest clan in Manasseh? My tribe is the least to succeed. How then can I defeat the Midianites who's been oppressing us for 70 years? Listen, God will always choose people who are for us to depend on him because of their own flaws and fallacies. If you are perfect, you ain't next in line. God will only choose those who are defected. He will only choose those that everybody know. How then can they arrive? How then can they achieve? Listen, if God can work on me, if God can use me and convince me that I can do it even with my background, my, uh, my past, my, my pedigree, that not suggest I look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, there's nothing God can't do in your life. I will always choose people. Oh, Shaka Khan. God will always use people uh, uh, who have uh, uh, flaws and, and fallacies. See, as long as you feel proficient in your own ability, you will always struggle to completely trust God to help you to pull it off. As long as you feel that you still have resources, uh, where is that need for faith? Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, because I know I can't do it apart from him, I've got to trust him to help me to pull it off. So God said, Gideon said to himself, Gideon saw himself as defected. Uh, can I preach it like I feel it? It's best getting on my nerves. He saw himself deficient. 
Uh, he saw himself uh, defeated. But God called him a warrior. He called him a victor and not a victim. Because as long as you tolerate with defeat, uh, it will convince you that victory ain't possible. As long as you hang out with defeat, you will never believe that you can win. But here it go. God called him not just a warrior, but God called him a mighty warrior before the battle begins. Because God knows how to name your beginning from your end and start you from the beginning with the end in mind and tell you that you're already finished before you start. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, God knows how to give you revelation that you're already a winner before you begin to fight. That's why Paul says that I fought a good fight. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, it was a good fight. Doesn't mean that it felt good. But the fight that you were fighting became good because the fight that was fighting you could not win. Uh, look at your neighbor next door and say, I'm still here. Oh, I fought a good fight. It didn't feel good, but I won. Uh, look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, I'm a mighty man of warrior. But you have to shift from defeat to defeat. Oh, that almost sounds like an oxymoron. It sounds like a paradox. How then, Minister Barry, can we shift from defeat to defeat very easy? It's when you understand that when we know that God and when you know that God is with you before the battle starts, you can defeat the very thing that's trying to defeat your victorious place. So in verse 13, Gideon said, God, if it's you, then why are you going uh, through this, why am I rather going through this hell of oppression? If you are what our ancestors told us about, why have you abandoned us? You cannot allow your present situation to become a permanent tattoo to mark your future. Just because what you are believing and what you are going through feels like a contradiction to what you know about God. Nor can you conclude that God has abandoned you because you are still in your present struggle. God will never, watch this, make a demand on you to do something without assuring you that you can pull it off. And your assurance is God's allowance. Part of the certainty that the Lord would allow you to experience is when he gives you privilege to embrace what he allows. And so then he allowed Gideon to try before he buy. God allowed Gideon to get clarity that only God could clarify. A part of God's allowance is, is when we understand that God is not because of nature, but nature is because of God. And Gideon understand that if God is with me, uh, then he's the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If God, if the same God that my ancestors taught me about, that my forefathers taught me about, then I know that I can walk in my victorious place because he's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. If he's the same God that split the Red Sea and caused the Hebrew people to pass on dry ground, and if he is the same God that's saying that he's with me, that I've already won before the battle begins, if he's the same God that did not allow 
of the clothes that I bought from Macy's to wear down. I wish I had. He's the same God that can deliver me. I wish I had somebody. If he's the same God that talked to Moses from the burning bush, he has got to be the same God. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, we serve a same God who led the Israelites by day with a cloud and by night with flaming fire. He is the same God that caused the rock to spew out water. He's the same God that fed Israelites with manna. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, we don't serve no uh, used to be God. We serve a right now God in age. We serve a right now God in present. And so your certainty is when God allows you to test him. Not from a place of unbelief. And here it is. Uh, Gideon said, well, listen, I know that you are God of nature. I know that you can change nature. You can cause rain to rain. You can cause sun to shine. You can cause water to be in desert places. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, that if he's the same God, he's got to do it. I wish I had somebody. I need you to do something for me. I need you to take this sheepskin that's attached with wool and I need you to wet it on ground but leave the ground that the water come out of dry and God did it look at your neighbor next door and say neighbor God is in the clarifying business I can't buy unless I try oh, pardon me God I don't need to offend you now but I need you to do one more thing because you are God that's over nature I need you to wet the ground but dry the fleece and God did it but before Gideon said all of that in verse 18 the Bible says he told the angel of God he said I need you to not leave let me prepare an offering an offering of praise and worship you see the problem with saints one of the reasons why we go victim is because we're trying to place a demand on God to do something when we not worship him first Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, you've got to worship him first. You can't command God to do nothing if you ain't been a praiser. I'm only talking to those who's been praising God in spite of. I'm only talking to those who's been praising God who wouldn't have made no sense. And yet God confirmed it. Because the Bible says he heated up the rock. I wish I had somebody cook the meat, made the meat turn into soup. I wish I had somebody poured it on the sacrifice. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, the way to get God's attention is to learn how to praise him before you command him. Learn how to be a worshiper before you command him. And getting an accent, he said, don't leave me now. God says, I ain't going to leave you until you finish the offering. Oh, high five your neighbor if you ain't scared of COVID. Tell your neighbor next door. Say, neighbor, God is going to honor your clarion. He's going to honor your request because you've been praising him. You've been worshiping him. And God press pause. Take your ET finger and let and put a demand on the movement of God. God has to stop and check 
check you out. Because when you praise him right, you get God's attention. When you worship him right, you oppress Paul's. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, I'm experiencing a pregnant pause. Oh, y'all didn't get it. I wish I had somebody. You are about to give birth to your miracle. Keep on praising him now. Keep on worshiping him now. I gotta go. I can't place no demands on God unless I prepare him an offering. And then he began to make a demand. He began to make a demand. He says, all right, you believe more than I, but I know the power of worship. I know the power of obedience. I'm doing it not because I fully understand it, but I know worship can get your attention. I wish I had somebody here. I need every eye closed. Lift those hands right now. I try to move as quickly as I could. Hallelujah. 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 God is about to get some blessings to you. Stop looking at back then. Yes, sir. When I let go, when I let God, let God have yes. his way. That's when things start happening. When I stop looking at person, every person, if you need a fresh touch from God, good to see you, good to see you, you that's in that rusk, lift your hands, it's hard for me to design everybody because of this, this doggone mass, I hate them, but I know that we have to wear them, lift your hands right now, Minister Beverly, turn around. Go to that woman. You're, you're the nearest. Glad to see Mother Gail. God bless you, baby. Lay your hands on her now. I'm asking her to do it, sister, as a point of contact. God says he's heard you cry. He's read your email. And he's ready to do it if you're ready. I'm calling you as he called Gideon, great woman of God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that your future does not look like your present. So I need you to praise God from that place by building your future from your future while in your present. Release it right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now lay your hand, lay your hand on her head so God can work on your thoughts. Hallelujah. There is another. There is another. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you now. Sister Felicia, right there, right you are. Sister Moon, stand, baby. I'm glad to see you. I put a fleece before God. Send her to this ministry. Let me see her. Lay your hands on her as a point of contact for me. I sanctify this moment. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is in your scream and your holler. God's going to give you a release. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I need you to lift your hands, my dear sister, and decree it so. Nikki, run back there for me, baby. Where are you at? Run back there right now. I, 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 I sense an anointing, sister, in your hands. My shot, there it is. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Touch. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord. Let go. Let go. Oh, 
everybody, but I know what he can. I know what he can. Yes. Worrying how the story ends. You've been saying in your spirit, God, I know I heard from you and you unction me to do it, but it ain't working the way I like it. God says within the next seven days, it's going to begin to ignite yes. again. 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 I see, brother, I've been knowing you, brother Boston. God know how to bring them names, right? I see a business for you, son. I don't know that's been lingering in your mind, but God's going to bless you with a business. Extra income. You're a big man, and God's going to help you to get it done. How many believe that he's going to do it? Somebody say a brand new truck. <laughs> Hallelujah. A brand new phone number. A brand new contact. I'm not here to curse you. I'm here to bless you. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. How many of you are feel even on air, and we got to hear it now, but listen, that you believe in God for a new business this year. You know, part of the reason why the pandemic came, I believe, spiritually, so it can push you. Put a demand on you to start your own business. Hallelujah. How many of you are believing that God is going to bless you with a new business? Raise your hand. And say, yes. Raise your hand. Minister Hawkins, others. You believe God's going to bless you? Now, now listen, no good because I'm, I'm asking you. But you truly believe it. All right. Now, God says it's already yours, but you got to act like it's already yours. You got to get up and you got to get it moving. Listen, you got to get moving. You don't want that favor to pass you up. You want to get moving right now. It's already yours. There's about 10 of you right now. God says, this year will be your year of entrepreneurship. In Jesus' name. And to many, God has blessed you with business. He's going to give you multiple streams. I'm going to say multiple streams of income. Multiple streams. Multiple streams. Multiple streams. So, Father, as you leave from this place, whenever from your proximity, God, we do pray for Charlie and Grace, who the laser accidents. God, as we gift today, I need you to bless this level of giving. God, you've been mighty good to this church. You've been mighty good to this ministry. God, you bless us immensely, uh, financially, in all areas, spiritually and intellectually. We thank you for that. 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 Would you right now, I want you to raise your hand. Raise your hand if you need a tight envelope. Any level of giving envelope, we want you to raise your hand. And y'all help me get it done. Y'all help me get it done. I'm trying to move as quickly as I can. Were you blessed by this word, Sister Stephanie? Come on, were you blessed by this word? Hallelujah. Every one of you, God loves. And don't allow your present situation to mar your knowing how much he does love you. The fact that you're here. The fact that you survived it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I want you to give the best you can. Lord help. Thank you. Thank you, son. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. He lives. I wanted, I wanted to wear me one of them Western hats. But I, I have an inheritance. Okay, talk about it. I tried to do it. Somebody say, if it don't fit, you got to quit. Come on. Hallelujah. But listen, 
I want you to enjoy the word. Have fun in hearing God's word. Who, who say you got to be serious, still, stale, and stationary? Amen. There need to be some lubricant in God's word. Amen. Y'all ready to give? Hallelujah. Give me an envelope, please. Modeling the expected behavior. You who are online, we want you to give online. Y'all know how we do it. I know that my redeemer lives. Oh, I know that my redeemer lives. I know that my redeemer lives. I can feel, I can feel in my hands, in my head. I can feel, I can feel in my feet, in my feet. asking you if God is leading you to give to me I want you to do that amen you have that agape envelope just ask for it and if if you don't if the ushers are moving too slow just run up here and place it in my hand amen, amen. let me know it's mine now because I just believe whatever hits my hand is mine amen. and then those of you who want to give by way of cash app you can do that too and Zell and if you want to give by way of Zell, it's in the church's name, but just earmark and say that's for Pastor Leroy because I have a CFO. You got to specify it. Amen. So y'all be sure to specify that that's for winner. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? How many know that it's a blessing to give than to receive? Amen. That's what the Bible says. I ain't just giving you my own take on it. That's what scripture. Let us all stand collectively. We're about 20 minutes over, but we're going we're gonna to make it happen. Thank you, Deacon. Everybody. I know that my Redeemer lives. All of these ashes. Yeah. I know that my Redeemer lives. Sing. I know that my Redeemer lives. Ministry. They're out in the in the backyard there, outside, they got food and inside.